my mother was in, she didn't know what she was doing. She didn't pay anything of our things, no food, no towels. It was her condition what she was in. We were there for two days and we went home. We had no idea where my father and my brother was, but finally we, we were united. Uh, and um, uh, my, uh, uh, and that's where they started the transport that was November 9, 1938. The people were transported to the concentration camps. Uh, the people uh, who rented our apartment, the father was taken. They didn't take come for us. And then the war broke out. No, I was in, in uh, this is personal. If, if they had kinder transport, children's transport. They went to Australia and uh, England. And I was supposed to go to Australia in June 15, 1938. My suitcase was packed and I was supposed to leave, but I got sick. Now, now as I grew up and I uh, was married to a psychiatrist, I was a social worker and we had talked about it, said we think that I was not sick. I said that I couldn't walk, my feet hurt me. I was, I did, I was afraid to leave. Uh, it was postponed for the, I was, the tra tra transport went off, but the next trans kinder transport was planned for September 15, 1938. Uh, you know, as it got worse and worse in the, in Germany, and um, of course, then the war broke out, and I never went to Australia, which I was very glad that I was with my parents, and I didn't want to uh, uh, separate it from my parents. Okay, I'm going to the camp when the, the war broke out September 1st, 1938, 39. Uh, of course, then everything was twice as much. First of all, we had carts for food. Uh, they had J all over the, they had little stops that we had to give to the store. And each one has a J so they would know we were Jewish. Well, we were only allowed to go shopping from four to five. There was no food to begin with. At four o'clock, they had nothing left. Uh, so we, our woman from the uh, farmer's market gave us not only meat, but other things. But it was always dangerous for me to go with that school bag. Um, the, uh, um, so we had air raids every night when the war broke out. It was, first it was at 12 o'clock it was the English, at 3 o'clock it was the Russians. We lived right next to a factory where they made the uniforms for the soldiers. And when, the, when we had an air raid, we had to go an air raid that was for the Jews. I mean, it was, if there would have been, not a bomb, but just a, a dime fell in, it would have collapsed because it was really, we were better off in our apartment. But we did have, we had to go because they came in and saw, checked whether we were there. Well, one night, there was, there was a factory three houses away from us who made uniforms for the soldiers. And one night, a bomb fell into that, it was thrown into that. What happened was that at first they always saw light war bombs, and then after that came the bomb, and it went all uh, uh, into the, into a thing. Well, we were kind of, she had, it was a call in German, vicious joy, schadenfreude, that actually is a, because there was this, uh, you know, and from then on, it got worse and worse. I mean, people were constantly um, sent to the concentration camps, and you know, um, what I said before about the demonstrations in the other place, we had moved to a different place. My father worked, as I said, he worked at a cemetery. And on Sunday, when they had their demonstrations, 
my mother and I were standing at the window. I remember she was holding my hand and was waiting for my father, waiting whether he will come home or his clothes will be home. That was a thing that happened all the time. We practically every day worried, is my father coming home or just his empty clothes? My father worked in the cemetery. And I went, as I went to, as I said, for my school, sometimes I'd be a little bit here and a little bit there. Uh, the, or my school was closed because they made it for a, a, a hospital for the soldiers who were hurt. And we had, there was a, a Jewish boys' school, and we shared the school with the boys. We went in the morning or afternoon, and the, or they went and uh, said, our school, as I said, was the, and uh, we, of course, didn't, uh, le didn't learn very much. In three hours, you cannot learn very much. There was, in, during the war, in, in, uh, the war started in 39. In 1940, um, we, were, we were commanded in our vacation to work at the Jewish cemetery. Now, I cannot really explain that. But you know, the Jewish people have three holy men, and they have one is Israel, Levin, and um, Frank, tell me, forget. Kohens. Kohen, thank you. And some people are Kohens, that is a, the highest priest, and that goes into your Jewish name. My father was a Kohen, and so I am a Kohen. Uh, we had, as it turned out, that my husband, whose name was Cohen, he also was a Cohen, but that had nothing to do with it. They knew that I could not go to the cemetery because a Cohen cannot go to the cemetery or a funeral home if the parents are still alive. Well, we got, um, in 1940 in the summer, we were commanded to work at the Jewish cemetery and clean the, uh, the, the grass and everything. My, uh, the boys were there. They had to demolish the, uh, the iron. They, around some, some had big places where, and they had to take off the iron because that was needed for the war. They had to make the bombs or whatever. Well, my father was devastated. My parents were alive, and I had to work at the cemetery. That was absolutely not. But, but we couldn't tell the SS I'm not coming, because, you know, it was, uh, that was for my father was a, a horrible thing. We had nowhere to go. People left who had people in America, in the South. We had no place to go. Uh, and we were really ready to just be transported to the uh, concentration camp. But, and then one day, uh, we had, and I, I have to go backwards. In November 1938, when they did the first sending people to the concentration camp, what you think was that they had the rich Jews, and they had to make a uh, promise that they will give all their money to Adolf Hitler in five uh, uh, um, times, in five years. I had this uncle where we were, and I had another uncle who was extremely wealthy, and people have said to him that he should give some money to my father so that he save some, so that he save some money. But he, they were so trained in Germany, Achtung, you do that what is being told. And they had to pay, give all their money to Adolf Hitler and five still. So my uncle, whose house we were in, packed his things and went to Belgium illegally. Also the other uncle, who was married to my mother's sister, also went illegally to Belgium. Well, as you know, Hitler marched into Belgium, into Brussels, and the two men we are put there again at the concentration camp. 
my uncle, the, the first one who, whose house we stayed in, he had no wife. He went to he put in a, was put in a concentration camp in Gers. I think it's Portugal. He was there, and he escaped from it, uh, and went to over the Pyrenees by the foot to Portugal to Port, uh, to Lisbon, and there was somebody from the Jewish uh, committee in America, and he was there, and he said, if you want to have your family come to the to uh, uh, the Dominican Republic and be a, uh, uh, have a farm, then we will give you the visa and you can get your family over. Well, it was getting very bad in Germany. I mean, really, you know, we couldn't go anywhere. We couldn't, we had nothing practically to eat. Um, and of course, my uncle wrote to us, we didn't know where he was, but we, and my father, of course, said, yeah, of course we are going. We had no idea where the Dominican Republic was in 1940. I mean, now the, everybody goes there. Uh, but we had no idea, and I remember people said to my father, where are you going? You don't know where that is. And my father said, I don't know where it is. I would go to the moon. He didn't know that someday we'll go there. <laughs> but he, he didn't care where it was. It was out of Germany. So we did all the papers. The thing was that my father had before TB and we had to have an x-ray that had to be clear to, to leave Germany and to go. Well, it so happened that they did an x-ray, it was all right, it was clear. One day we had to go to some, to the consulate of the Dominican Republic, no, that was, yeah. But the Germans were there to be sure that what we Jews did was okay. And two SS men, again we said the German shepherds, I can, I have trouble with dogs, came and took my brother away, just come with us, and we were sure we'll never see him again. But they kept him for about two or three hours, he had to move furniture for them. And we had to wait for them, not knowing whether he came back alive or anything. Well, we got all the papers, and we went to the Dominican Republic. I have to go, but you know, that was, I don't know if you know that, the only country that accepted the Jews. In 1938, 39 nations met in Avignon to, to, um, to may find a solution where the Jews could come. As a matter of fact, it was suggested to Roosevelt that they could buy some land in Alaska, and Roosevelt said no. Um, 39 nations were there, and the only nations who said, I will take 100,000 Jews, that was the Dominican Republic. The leader of the Dominican Republic was a dictator, who in 1933 killed 300,000 Haitians because they were black. He had it with the blacks and Adolf Hitler with the Jews. Well, that was, we, we didn't know it at the time. But that was when my uncle was able to send us the visas. Unfortunately, only a thousand people came because Adolf Hitler didn't let the people out. Um, so we got the, um, all the papers, and we then, but now the thing was that every day Jews were transported with concentration camps. And they also had another thing that between 45, between 18 and 45, uh, people could not leave because they were sent to the working camps. But my brother and I were under 15, 18 and my parents over 45. But the day before we left Germany, it was raised. It was from 45 to 60. Now my parents were it, but but we but we left. But if we had left one day later, my parents could not have left because they were under 65. So it is just it, to me. I I hope I can bring this feeling over to you. What we went through and what every minute of the day or night was pure torture and pure. I mean, it. I can 
I, I feel it, but I hope I can bring this to you, what it went. We went with the last train out of Germany. Uh, my, my father's family, his sister and her family, said goodbye to us. It was very dramatic, because they were sure they would never see each other again. We left Berlin on a Sunday night. It was horrible. We went with the train to France, and on the way to France, somebody from the Jewish community came with our group, and he said, please, if you have anything you are not allowed to have, because women used to buy, we used to sew gold pieces into their jacket from a suit, gold and silver pieces. And she, she, he's told us that the night before, they caught some of them. They were turned away and they were sent back to the concentration camps. And she said, please, whatever you have, throw away. You will not, they will not. We came to France where we stopped and where we had, first of all, they took all our, what we, we didn't have passports. They, we had something that was like claws, and there was our picture in it from the front and from the side, like criminals. We also were given, during around 1937, they took, they, everybody, every Jewish wife, woman had to have the name Sarah, so that when you showed that identification, they knew you were Jewish. When you had a Jewish name, uh, then you didn't need the Sarah. The men had to have Israel in between. My father's name was Moses, so that was Jewish enough. They didn't have to. So when we came to France to the border, they took our, not, it wasn't a passport, we were, they took our citizenship away in 1936. So if you have no citizenship, you do not have the protection of your government. You were like a wild animal. You could be shot, whoever wants to take a shot at you, be my guest. Uh, in the, what we had, like a passport, they took it away at the border. They also took that Jewish star away because they didn't want anybody in, the, in another country. The countries probably knew what was going on, but they didn't want to have a proof that this was going on in Germany. When we got to the border, we all had to go into a house. We were separated from the men and we had to go completely undressed. But when I say completely, completely. And she examined us. And she examined every opening. I'm sorry to say it, but it has to be said. She examined every opening in the human body. Whether some people hit something, I don't have to be more clear. You, I'm sure you know what I mean. My, my father had a ring from his mother that was gold. And as we went over the border, my father, since he said, if you have anything, you're not supposed to have, please drop it. And my father had that ring and he took it off and he dropped it. And my brother was there next to him and he caught that ring. Now, he had that ring. They didn't find it. But my parents, when they heard it afterwards, were very upset because if they had found that, that was extremely, not just stupid, but clearly that my brother found it. But my father had this ring from his mother, which, you know, is... We went to France and nobody else had anything. We went back into the train. We went to Spain, where we stayed the night in a fabulous hotel. It was after the... Uh, the war has been, uh, you know, the, uh, and see, we had nothing to eat but a fabulous hotel. It was <coughs> terrible. We stayed there one night, and then we went on to Portugal, to Lisbon, the next day, where we were supposed to uh, wait for the uh, ship to go to the Dominican Republic. Uh, the ship, we waited for a long time. We, we had, between the four of us, we had $10. Two mark, two mark German mark, two dollars fifty cents. That was ten American dollars. Uh, we stayed in a, a pension, and that was full of bedbugs. But we had no choice. 
uh, and we had hoped that the ship would come soon. But it took three weeks and we were afraid that Hitler would march into Portugal because he was supposed to, I mean, and finally the ship came. And because even in Portugal, we were not safe. So that is up until we finally, when the ship came, it was a freighter, it was not a passenger. There were four, four uh, things with, um, where we slept, and we slept in the lowest. In the fourth thing, we, uh, they were all, even the beds were not just two beds, uh, bunk beds, there were four. And where we slept was where the sailors were standing up there. We could not get undressed in the evening. We had to sleep in our clothes because they were standing there. They were watching us. And uh, there was nothing for a shower. The food was terrible. Everybody was seasick. Uh, but we were on the ship, and that was the first time in years that we felt somewhat safe. Now, I don't know if you want me to talk about the Dominican Republic, uh, or if you want to at this point. Why don't you say a few words about the Dominican Republic? I beg your pardon? Say a few words about the Dominican Republic. Yeah, you want to hear? Yes. Uh, we arrived in the Dominican Republic on December 7, 1941. You know the date? You know the date? We had no idea because we had no newspapers or something. But my uncle, who came to, he, we came to the city. At that point, it was called Ciudad Trujillo, after Trujillo. You know, everything, a dictator and everything. And later on, when he was assassinated, uh, it was back to uh, uh, Santo Domingo, but it was Ciudad Trujillo. My uncle met, met us at the ship, and we uh, we were very glad we were on on ground where we felt safe for the first time in many years, because here really nobody we, we assumed, and it was so. We were free. Okay. What I didn't say was when they met in Avion, yeah, I said, 